Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. You're down. Now for those of y'all that's new to my page in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to share them with y'all today. So let's hop right up into this story. Now, this story takes place in Ironwood State Prison. Ironwood, like I told you guys before, is a prison located in the city of Blythe. Blythe is maybe about 20 minutes from Arizona, so it gets extremely hot down there. Now, this story takes place... <coughs> this story takes place around, I want to say, uh, 2004, you know. So, um, initially, I was on A-Yard. We ended up getting into a riot, the blacks with the whites... And uh, I didn't I didn't get caught up in that riot, but um, I didn't have a job at the time of the riot. And so they was they had locked everybody down and they was moving certain kitchen workers into a building so they could just release that building. And I was in that building and I didn't have a job. So they ended up moving me to CR, which was cool with me, because at the time of the move, AR was on lockdown because of the riot. So I get to CR. CR is up and running. And plus, it's a few of my homies over there dudes who I grew up with and like I say by by the fact for me being a small town it's rare that I'll run across homies that I grew up with so it was cool you know so uh I get over there man and I'm chilling you know doing what I'm doing or whatever uh eventually get over there and I start rapping a little bit <coughs> we used to have <coughs> we used to have little rap circles on the yard or ciphers or whatever and so from time to time a young dude would slide through by the name of Buck. That was his real name, man. Buck was from Hoover. Buck was probably about my complexion, maybe about my height, maybe 5'10", maybe about 165, 170, kind of a slim dude, right? And so, uh, you know, we'd holler from time to time or whatever just in passing. And so uh, one day I told you guys on the yard, we ended up getting into a riot with the Bloods on Sea Yard, right? And so as the riot take off and everybody over there squabbing, you know, beep, boop, pop, boop, beep, boop, pop, pop. Everything going on, whatever, whatever. Buck is maybe about, uh, maybe about 25, 30 feet, you know. He looks up. He see everybody over there squabbing is what he tells me later on. So initially, he thought it was the Blacks and the Southern Mexicans. And so he run over there to get involved. He was with the business, a young rider. So once he runs over there, he gets over there and he sees that it's the Blacks. Uh, it's just all Blacks, you know. It's, it's, it's the... Uh, I.E. Car versus the Damu, which he's not a part of either one of those, either one of those organizations or those cliques or whatever. So he falls back. So um, when the COs notice everything that was going on, <coughs> eventually, <coughs> eventually they run over there and they put the yard down. So uh, when a situation like that happens, you know, sometimes if you just happen to be caught up in that perimeter, even though you may not be involved, even if they think that you involved, you go into the hole. So uh, even though he wasn't involved, he ended up going to the hole because he was caught up in that perimeter, right? And so he went to the hole. Also, also another Crip had ran over there. I forget his name. He was a young dude about a San Diego. And so uh, <coughs> they end up going to the hole along with uh, us, you know, the participants in that riot. The homies from IE and a lot of the, uh, the Damus, right? So uh, eventually, you know, we sitting up in the hole now. Uh, Buck, he up in there chilling. He ain't tripping, you know. Sometimes, you know, when you caught up in that lifestyle, you sometimes you get caught up in situations that you're not involved in. But the San Diego dude, San Diego dude is tripping. He like, oh man, I'm caught up. I wasn't. I didn't have nothing to do, you know. I'm uh, I'm trying to go home because he was getting ready to go home in a month or so. But you know, like uh, that's out of our control. You know, we don't have no control over when you're going to get released and all that old type of stuff and then of course the administration they knew who the riot was um riot was from and so everybody has what's known as a c file or a central file you know and a lot of times they'll document where you're from if you're a blood or crip depending on the information you give to the administration or whatever when you get housed or whatever so i don't know if he had told him you know he was a crip he was a non-affiliate or whatever whatever but eventually they end up releasing him you know they release him and buck you know, and so I stayed up in there about three months, you know, and, and and then eventually I went to my hearing and I was found uh found not guilty. Right. So I get kicked out to B yard. I stay on B yard a couple of months 
and then I get moved back to AR, right? So the situation with Buck, I can't necessarily remember if it was on A yard or it was on B yard, right? And so uh, the situation was this here. So one day we're getting ready to go to Chow. Um, so now when you come out the buildings, I, I think there was five buildings on A yard. When you come out the buildings, you have to go, you have to exit because on a 270 yard, You'll have the buildings on the yard, then you'll have a separate chow hall. And so when you come out, whatever building you was in, you would have to go to the left and you would walk clockwise to the dining hall. The dining hall sat over there by itself and it was connected to the gym. And so uh, when you get around to the when you got, got around to the dining hall, you would you would turn left and you would go in, you would enter the dining hall. Now, once you entered the dining hall, they had a rail. That rail was almost probably about waist high. And you would probably walk maybe about 100 feet just down a long line. Everybody would get in a long line. And now on, on the other side of the rail, they had those metal, they had metal tables with four seats connected to them. And that's where we would eat. Um, inside, inside the chow hall, um, the big old giant chow hall, then you also had a guard in a in like a, a tower inside the chow hall so he could overlook the chow hall. So now as we walked down that long railing, it was maybe about 75 feet, then it would turn to the right. Then you would walk another about 20 feet and then you would get your tray. So now as you're walking, you're just walking along a, uh, a wall. You can't see who's behind the wall or whatever. But on the other side of that wall is, is the... Um, they're in there preparing the food and putting the food on the tray. It's like, a, you know, it's like a line or whatever. And so uh, an assembly line basically is what you would call it, right? And so when you get to the, now on the other outside of that wall where the convicts are, like I say, it's just a wall, you know, and you're walking and then you get to this little slot and the slot is where they just pass, slide the trays about of. So now as you, when you get up there to on the, on the wall, because now the wall is on the left side. So when you get up there and you bend over and get your tray, there's a wall right in front of you, which there's a guard sitting up against the wall to make sure every convict, you know, only gets one tray or whatever. So now it's Buck and a few of his homies. And uh, me, I'm probably about, I don't know, maybe about 25, 30 feet back. I haven't, he's already turned the corner and he's going to the, you know, he's going to the right to get his tray. I'm still in the line going straight. So all of a sudden, you know, the line, is, we're moving along. Now, all of a sudden the line stops, right? So I'm talking to one of the homies or whatever. I'm not necessarily paying attention. Then I happen to look up and I see Buck having words with a CO. Now, the CO that he's talking to is a black dude, man. Um, the black dude, I would probably say maybe was about 5'9", you know. Um, I don't remember the name of the officer. He was a black dude, 5'9", maybe about, maybe about 185, 190, somewhere around there, you know. And they're talking. Like I say, I'm quite a ways back, so I don't necessarily hear what's being said between the two. Because, um, you know, I don't necessarily know that there's anything out of order going on at that at that particular moment, right? So I'm just happy to be looking. And then all of a sudden I see Buck say, man, you's a bitch. And the guard say, the CO that he talking to, he say, man, you's a bitch. And then Buck just get off. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep. Buck go to busting him up. You know what I'm saying? So then the guard rushing, they go to squabbing or whatever. One of the guards, or so somebody see it, they hit the alarm. Get down, get down, get down. You know, so everybody in the uh, in the child hall gets down. The guards running there. They gaffle Buck up. They take Buck to the hole. Now, of course, anytime you put your hands on a CO, you definitely going to get a shoe. And it's a high probability that they're going to, once they get you back to the hole or get you out of the sight of all the convicts, because, of course, they got you in handcuffs. It's a high probability that they're going to bust you up and get their licks back, right? And so um, I end up seeing Buck maybe about, I want to say, maybe about eight or nine years later. Or maybe not even that long, maybe four or five years later at another institution. And he said because of that, he got some extra time on his sentence, right? So in that situation, um, you can look at it one or two ways, right? Of course, people going to look at it like Buck disrespected the men and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, that's what the guards sign up for. <coughs> y'all know y'all coming to work amongst, you know, criminals, street thugs, crips, bloods, dudes who run afoul of the law and dudes who don't respect the authority, right? So... Um, now, of course, you know, calling a man, uh, uh, the B word, of course, that's, that's extremely disrespectful and you have a lot of dudes that's not going to accept that. But at the end of the day, 
The guard is supposed to be held to a higher, uh, a higher standing because he's a professional. You know, they have they have a uh, means and measures to go about when they uh, when they think a person is being disrespectful. You know, he could have actually just wrote. He could have wrote Buck up, gave him a 115 for disrespecting staff or whatever, and then let, you know, let the higher ups, the lieutenants and all that stuff deal with it. But when he chose to, um, you know, respond, not saying that he shouldn't have responded, but when he chose to respond, you know, uh, Buck got off on him, man. Buck did what he was supposed to do. Because if any man call you, call you, a, you know, call you that, you you supposed to get off, whether you, you call it to him first or or second, you know what I'm saying, and so, uh, yeah, man, Buck was with the business, you know, Buck didn't play no games, man, and I don't necessarily remember what Hoover Street that he was from, because for those of you guys not necessarily from California, or not necessarily knowledgeable about the gang culture, you have some gangs out there that have several different, they're, they're large, and they have several different um, gangs on certain streets, so just to name a few, right, you got the Five Deuce Hoovers, that's on 52nd Street, and Hoover, I'm assuming because, you know, I've never ne never necessarily been out there myself, but just being around them and hearing people talking, you know, I know a little bit about them. Then you have, you know, you have 7-4 Hoover, you have a Trey Hoover, 9-Deuce Hoover, 9-4 Hoover, 107 Hoover. So it's a bunch of different streets, right? So a lot of times when I may encounter dudes who happen to be from gangs like that, I would just maybe, you know, due to association, sometimes you see who they hang with, or you might ask them, hey, homie, where you from out there? If, with me, if me and a dude happen to get cool, we play basketball or we rap together, and so, you know, um, something like that, he might say, oh, I'm from this hood or I'm from that hood, so, you know, I wouldn't a lot of times encounter what um, specific one, you know, he was from, uh, unless we just happen to get real cool, and I remember him saying it or hearing it, you know, later on, I had a celly, and I can't quite remember if he was from either Nine Deuce Hoover or he was from Nine Four Hoover. His name was Black, man. Black was real cool, man. And so, uh, you know, one of my better cellies that I ever had. So if anybody happened to know out, anybody out there happened to know where Black is from, man, from Nine Deuce or Nine Four Hoover, Black was probably about five eight, dark skin. Um, you know, tap in with me, man. I want to send my boy some bread. You know, yeah, Black was a good dude, but. Uh, I didn't see many, I didn't see many, you know, I didn't see many guards get busted up, you know. Sometimes you don't always have a backstory on it, you know. Sometimes you might just look up and you see, beep, 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 boop, bop. You see somebody squabbing, you know, getting off on the guard or whatever. And uh, at least when I was locked up and going to the pen, it happened quite a lot, you know. But at the end of the day, a lot of times, you know, guards get assaulted um, because they're they're unprofessional, you know. Um, some instances you do have, you do have convicts in there, you know, having a bad day and not just, not just caring. And, uh, you know, they just, they, uh, or they have anger issues and sometimes they're mentally ill, you know, not necessarily all there together. But, uh, you know, that's the situation where I seen a uh, buck from Hoover get off on the guard, handle this business, man. So you already know what it is. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.